بسم الله with the name of Allah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen All praises due to Allah Lord of all the worlds Wassalatu wassalamu ala Nabiyana Muhammadu ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd I may the peace and blessings be upon his final messenger His slave Muhammad ibn Abdullah And his family and his companions So to proceed I see some new faces today Alhamdulillah And I see some older faces um, again, just to remind us, this class is a class to enlighten ourselves about the Muslims and Islam in general. Um, the largest growing religion in the world is Islam. A lot of the controversy we see around the world today is Islam, is around Islam. And that environment of Islamophobia, if we want to call it that, which is a, a, a term that they coined today to mean the uh, fear of Islam that has been created by the media and other entities is something that we should enlighten ourselves from. Because the reality is, most of us here, if we haven't encountered Islam in our lives, we probably encountered a Muslim in our lives. We probably have some family or friends that is a Muslim. And it's important for us to have at least some knowledge about it, to elevate ourselves. So we call this class, for all intents and purposes, Islam 101. And I'm trying to make it as basic as possible. That's why we call it 101, right? Uh, there's a few things that when we're speaking about Islam, and I mentioned this last week as well, that we have to use as a disclaimer. Sometimes I mention Christianity. Sometimes I mention the teachings of Jesus. And I do that because many of us come from Christian backgrounds or we live in a society that is based on Christian values. And although there may be a lot of similarity between what Islam teaches and Christianity, there is a lot of differences as well. And that is what we want to talk about. So last week we spoke about the term, and like I said, I want to mention just one term or one concept each class for us to try to grasp it right we spoke about last week the concept of deen deen is a word in arabic that means that we we use to call islam a way of life a complete way of life allah tells us our god my god and your god the almighty he says in his book in the final revelation in the quran he says lakum al -islam that this day i have perfected your religion and I chose and I am pleased with Islam as your deen, your way of life. And it's quite different to the word religion. Most Muslims you will hear, they will, they will avoid the term religion when speaking about Islam. Why? Because the word religion connotates a group of, or a set of practices or rituals that one does in their private life and keeps it out of their public life. Something you do for yourself and you don't let it interact with the other aspects of your life. You, you, you know, you, you pray when you go home at night, in your bedroom, in your house, behind closed doors. And you don't really have much instruction in what is called religion today as to how you interact with other aspects of your life. Islam is not like that. Islam is a complete way of life. And we mentioned one of the narrations last week that one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, uh, said that there's not a bird that flaps its wing in the sky except that our prophet taught us something about it. And one of the other companions who, when they were, one of the Jews ridiculed them and said that your prophet even taught you how to use the toilet in a mocking way. And he said yes. Proudly. Because every aspect of our life is not left void of guidance. Our creator, our sustainer, our God. My God and your God, the God of all the prophets and messengers, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus, the God of Muhammad, all that God did not leave us without guidance. So today we want to talk about, if we say this deen, this way of life called Islam, we want to talk about what does the word Islam actually mean? When we hear the word Islam, what does the word Islam actually mean? Islam is the only ideology or way of life in this world in this existence that by its very name attaches you to the creator attaches you to your god by in its namesake alone what do i mean i mentioned this in our previous class christianity is an attachment to who where does the word christianity come from 
What, what word do you see in Christianity? Christ, right? Jesus Christ. So the word Christianity means an affiliation to Christ. Peace be upon him. Um, Hinduism is an attachment to the Hindu Kush mountains, a region in India. Buddhism is an attachment to who? Buddha. Buddha is a man, is an actual man who lived in, in, in the uh, BC, in the time before Christ. Um, Judaism, the Jews, is an attachment to whom? To Judah. Judah was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, of Israel. So Judaism is an attachment to him, Judah. Islam has nothing like that. The word Islam comes from an Arabic uh, root word that has, with three letters, it's, I'll just show you for the sake of, seen, lamb, mean, which it could loosely be translated as like S-L-M. Arabic is written from left to right. I mean, from right to left, right? So it might look a little bit different. These are three letters in Arabic. And it is the root word of the word Islam, which comes from a word, Aslama. Aslama means to submit to something or someone holistically. Aslama. So when I say Islam, this root is, der is derived from the same root word Aslama. It means to submit. To submit to what? To submit to the will of the one God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So Islam comes from the word meaning. Islam means to submit to the one true God. That is why the word Islam in and of itself attaches you to the creator. And that is the objective of Islam. The objective of Islam and Allah, the almighty, the creator, your God and my God, sending the prophets and messengers and teaching us this religion and all the previous religions in its pure form was to help you build a relationship between you and your creator directly, directly. There's no intercession. There's no need to go through anyone else. There's no need to pray to someone else to ask Allah for you. Allah is free of that. The God Almighty, your God, my God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is not in need of anyone to ask on your behalf. He is a just God. He's an all-hearing God. He's an all-seeing God. So Islam is the attachment in the submission to the will of that one true God, Islam. Now there's a term that we will all probably, most of us might be familiar with. If we submit ourselves to that one true God, it means that we are a slave of that God. And I'm going to say some things that might sound a little bit contrary. It might sound a little bit perhaps offensive in this term. When we as Muslims say, how many of you have ever heard the term Abd? Or like when we say you meet somebody named Abdullah. You ever heard of somebody called Abdullah? Anybody ever know somebody by the name of Abdullah? What about Abdurrahman? What about Abdul Jabbar? What about Abdul Karim? Never heard any of these names before? Wow. This generation here. Oh, you ever heard of Abdul Karim? Uh, 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 Jabbar, Abdul Jabbar Karim, one of the basketball players for the Lakers, Abdul Hakim. Any of these names? Never heard these names? All right. Anytime you hear a name, somebody's named Abd, and then what follows it? So you have, for example, Abd al Hakim. You'll see it spelled different ways. Of course, it's in Arabic. So the way we transliterate it into English could be different. You could see Abd Ar Rahman. Anytime we see a name that has the, the, the prefix abd, abd means slave. And what comes after is, is, is the name of Allah. One of the names of Allah. Allah has some beautiful names and attributes. The one God. And by us, how we know that God is through his beautiful names and attributes. So, and that is a, a topic we'll talk about later on. But just for the sake of this definition, abd, Allah, slave of Allah. Abd al-Hakim. Al-Hakim is one of the names of Allah. Al-Hakim means the most wise. Many of you know, you ever met anybody named Hakim? Hakim means wise in Arabic. Somebody who's wise. But Allah is Al-Hakim. Who wants to take a shot at what, the, what do you think Al-Hakim means? If Hakim means wise, Al-Hakim means what? 
the most wise ah, ah, excellent ahsant ah, the most wise because we may possess some wisdom but the possessor of all wisdom is allah the almighty ar rahman you ever heard of somebody named rahman okay or rahim what about rahim you ever heard of somebody named rahim rahim is the same word as almost as rahman it comes from the same word which means from rahma which means uh mercy so the person with the name rahim rahim means somebody who has mercy what therefore does ar rahim mean based on that say again the most merciful who said that I, I, you right alhamdulillah kala sir right ar rahim excellent means the most merciful so we are the slave of the most merciful now unfortunately if we go by the definition what or what we think slavery is because of the western connotation and the relationship between slavery between human and human we think it carries a negative meaning ab slavery we think is carries a negative meaning but the reality is being a slave to the almighty is the ultimate form of liberation and freedom i repeat being a slave to the Almighty, to your God and my God, which in reality is the ultimate form of liberation and freedom. Because it is not like the relationship between a master and a slave in this world. When we think of slavery and we think of the transatlantic slaves, transatlantic trade of slaves that took place, for example, with the colonial powers and so on. When we think of slavery, we think of, you know, somebody subjecting another a, a master subjecting a slave and that master is of course you know subject to bias to injustices to raciality all forms of injustice and oppression but allah is free of all of that and he is the almighty he is the one that is free of injustice free of oppression free of in, uh, of, of all these things and to be a slave to him liberates us from the slavery of the creation because he is the creator and the the owner of all things so i want us to let that concept sink in because the reality is folks this society that we live in has enslaved us and the type of slavery that exists today is a much greater slavery than existed in the colonial times the slavery in the colonial times was physical slavery yes and it was brutal by all standards in history but the slavery that exists today is a type of slavery a mental slavery one that keeps us in mental shackles and keeps our hearts in shackles and chains and makes us objects or mechanisms of profit for the society that we live in today and that is one of the reasons for the islamophobia the fear of islam that they have created because the reality is they don't want you to be muslim they don't want you to know about islam because look at how simple it is with islam the trillion dollar or the billion dollar alcohol industry dead the billion dollar gambling industry dead the billion or trillions of dollars made in interest banking interests which is haram impermissible in islam dead the trillion or billion or multi-billion dollar porn industry dead now they find that one funny but it's the reality because islam liberates people from these slavery these chains of slavery these shackles all these things hollywood dead Many of us think, you know, we sit down so amicably in front of our television set and we watch Hollywood movies, not realizing the level of brainwashing taking place in Hollywood. The fear of Muslims today, most of it took place in the Hollywood, in the movie industry. Every time you see a Muslim portrayed on TV, he's a terrorist. Every time you see a Muslim on, 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 on some, some media outlet, he's a gang member or a terrorist not knowing that that has absolutely nothing to do with islam and in fact if we go through history those of you i keep stressing this those of you who are you know uh people history buffs or if you like to consider yourself somebody who likes history i highly encourage you to look into history historically christianity 
spread by the sword and with mass killings and spread by putting the sword at people's necks and forcing them to convert, whereas Islam never ever, and I challenge anybody to show me otherwise. The Crusades, one of the most brutal times in, 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 in history. The Crusades, how many of you have heard of the Crusades? You've ever heard of the Crusades? The Crusades, when the, the European Christians, the white Christians from Europe decided to march to Jerusalem to liberate it from the Muslims. And when they went there, they swam in blood. They killed Muslim, Christian, and Jew, dogs and cats. They even killed their own Christian counterparts, anybody who wasn't their form of Christianity, which they were sent by the Pope at that time. Pope, oh, Pope Urban. Look it up if you want. It's not, it's facts, I'm telling you. There was one city that they invaded when they went, when they reached there. They killed 20,000 people, the city of Mara. They killed 20,000 people and ate them, cannibalists. And I am telling you this not from the Muslim accounts in history. This is from their own books. If you look up the Christian accounts, you'll see their own, the Holy Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Christian Empire. So don't tell me that Islam spread by the sword. Don't tell us that Islam forced. We have never forced anyone to convert. As a matter of fact, most of the people who converted to Islam converted due to the akhlaq and the mannerisms of the Muslims. The way they saw them interact with others. The way they saw them interact with their neighbors and their friends and with even animals. The way they saw them conduct business transactions. The fact that we don't take interest, as simple as that. A concept so alien to most people in the West. Interest. Every, everybody here knows what interest in the bank is, banking interest. Right. Did you know that interest was actually impermissible in the church before 1750? Until the church decided that they would recoin it and rename it and rebrand it so that they could take that interest now. Jesus himself, peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam, the great messenger and prophet, the Messiah, was against interest. When he went into the temple and he saw the Jews doing money lending and he ransacked the entire, uh, all the tables. Those of you who know a little bit about your Bible. It was that is what the Jews were doing. They were lending money and making money out of money. You know why? For the mere fact that making money out of money is one of the greatest forms of oppression. If I lend you $10 and I ask you to pay back $15, why? Because I have it and you don't have it. It's not a service I'm rendering. It's not, a, it's not any form of uh, labor that I'm doing, you doing for me or I'm doing for you in a just environment or in a just relationship of business. Islam promotes business. It promotes trade. Some of the biggest businessmen in the world are Muslim. But it does not oppress anyone. Allah tells us in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى Allah tells us, He has commanded you with adil, with justice, and ihsan, with perfection of your deeds. Justice. Justice is a central theme in everything in Islam. We do not oppress anyone. So it is important that we understand that this term abd is a, is a term that we are, that is an honorific term. It is a badge of honor for us. In fact, Allah tells us in the Quran about Jesus. Isa alayhi salam. And again, I'm using the word Jesus, although I dislike it, because it is a word that the Greeks formulated to give Isa alayhi salam, that great prophet, his original name in Aramaic was Yeshua, to give him that, that connotation of being this uh, superhuman, human-like God with divine powers. And in fact, Jesus is free of that. But Allah tells us about the great prophet Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, peace be upon him. That when he was born from the Virgin Mary, the Virgin Mary, Maryam in Arabic, there's an entire chapter in the Quran called the chapter of Mary. Show me a chapter in the Bible that has an entire chapter for Mary. And they say we, dis we are the one that dishonors Jesus. We love Jesus and his mother the way that he deserves and the way that they deserve to be loved and honored. That chapter, there's a, there's a verse in that chapter where the Jews accused Mary of being an adulterer. Do you all know that? Do you all know that the Jews accused Mary, the mother of Jesus, of being a, a fornicator? That's in the Bible too. As a matter of fact, that is one of the reasons why the Christians dislike the Jews historically. Historically, they had always attacked and killed the Jews. 
because they considered the Jews had the blood of Jesus on his hand. They considered Jews were the ones who killed Jesus. Although Allah, Allah has exonerated Jesus of that, he was not killed, rather he was taken up. That's another topic we'll talk about. But when Jesus was born, and Mary, Maryam, alayhi salam, what time is it? I can't, I can't no clock in here. It's almost time. All right, one minute. Let's finish up this story, right? Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. And, and it was a miracle. And it mentions this in the Quran, the book of Allah. And when the Jews accused Mary of that fornication, they said to her, they said, you, oh Mary, you came from a righteous family. Your father, Aaron, indeed, he was a righteous man. Aaron. Why did you commit such a horrible thing? But Mary had, Allah had made Mary uh, take a vow of silence. And she did not speak. All she did, Allah commanded her to do, was point to the infant in the cradle. The baby Jesus. And this is not in the Bible. This is one of those things that only you know if you, you only know it from Islam. From the Quran. She pointed to the, the baby. And you know what it said? Isa alayhi salam. Jesus. He spoke, and Allah made it a miracle that Jesus spoke as a baby. This is one of the miracles of, of Isa alayhi salam of Jesus. And he said, Inni Abdullah. He said, Verily, I am slave of Allah. And I was given the book. I was given the book. And I am a slave of Allah and a great prophet. And Allah has made me a great prophet and messenger. One of the greatest. My point is, it was an honor for him to say he is a slave of Allah. And we as Muslims are honored because we know that once we accept the fact that Allah created us to be his servant and he is the owner of everything, then by being a slave and a servant to him, we become free from the slavery and the servitude of everything and anything else. And that is the liberating factor of Islam. That is the true contentment that comes with Islam. Everything else is false. Not this concept of Jesus died for your sins. That was a big foolery that took place to fool mankind into becoming complacent, feeling that your sins and accountability is exonerated. Why do any good deeds? Why, why have, then why have any accountability for your bad deeds if somebody died for my sins already? How is it fair that your sins that you accumulated, that you did, the wrong things that you did, somebody else has to pay for it, much less a great prophet and messenger? As Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. These are the concepts that were introduced later on into Christianity. And they were not the teachings of Jesus. That is why I mentioned in the beginning of the class, the last week and this week, that when I say Christianity, I'm not speaking about the teachings of Isa of Jesus. The teachings of Jesus was Islam. And that is why the next few classes we'll talk about how all the prophets and messengers were upon this submission to the one true God. Jesus never called himself a Christian. Jesus never preached the, the Trinity as a matter of fact. The Trinity is something introduced much later on. And again, what I mentioned to you are things that Bible scholars, Christian academics, they all have various books about it. It's not something that I'm giving you as a conspiracy theory. These are things that are open for anybody if you just did a little bit of research and open up your heart and your mind. So we have to understand that the religion of Islam, and we use the word religion loosely, is a deen, it's a complete way of life. And whether or not you accept to be the slave of Allah, you are the slave of Allah. Because he created you. Just let me ask you one simple question. What is the one thing that all of mankind agree upon? Who could tell me? Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, Buddhist, black, white, Indian, Chinese. What is the one thing we cannot disagree on? We all have in, as a common belief. Let me see who point on the thinking caps. Say again. We all serve our God good, but at the same time, some people say they don't. Some people are atheists. But what is the one undeniable fact of life? Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul shall taste death. You ever met somebody who disagreed on death? Say death is not real? You ever hear anybody say that there's no such thing as death? Nobody disagrees on that. Do you have control over when you die? Do you or did you have control over when you were born? How you were born? What city you was born in? What circumstance you was born in? To what family you was born in? To what race you was born in? So who's in control? 
You think you are in control? We are so deluded as human beings. We are so we have deluded ourselves so much to think we are in control because with all the technologies and all the sciences and all the things that we think we have, we feel we are in control. But Allah is the one in control. So why not be his slave? Why not serve the one who is in control of you? That is what liberates you. We are not in control. Allah tells us in the Quran, and it's very specifically, He says, Kalla inna al insana layatra arraahu stagna. Inna illa rabbika ruja. Allah says that verily man transgresses all the bounds because he considers himself self sufficient. You think you could sustain yourself, but it is not you, it is Allah. And therefore, by serving Him and becoming a slave to Him, you will follow, you will end up following the religion of Islam by submitting your entire will to His, to His will and to, in, his, in His way of life that He has chosen for us as a perfect way of life. And believe you me, make no doubt about it, bila shak, without a doubt, if you do not accept to be the slave of Allah and you think you are not going to be subjugated to the laws of Allah because the laws of Allah are around us everywhere and the proof of it is rampant around us by our empirical evidences, our sight, our hearing, our, our, our smell, everything that our senses can see, by our intellect, our aql, we know that there is a God and we know that he, de he deserves to be worshipped. It is for us to come back. That is why you hear Muslims say when we spoke about in the first class, the fitra. Those of you remember that? The fitra means the natural disposition we was created upon. And when you come back to that, that's why you'll always hear Muslims if you go on TikTok or Instagram. You know, you'll hear, you'll see a lot of people now converting. I mean, um, turning to Islam. And we don't call it convert. We call it revert. Because a person who comes to, to, comes to Islam, who accepts Islam, he reverts back to the state that Allah wants him to be in. He does not convert. Convert means you change from one thing to a different thing. Revert means you go back to what you were originally created upon. You were created to submit to that one true God. You were created to be Muslim. Whether or not you accept it or not. And if you don't, believe you me, you might sit there and say, well, I'm not, you know, religious and I don't follow any religion. And You follow a religion. Whether you accept it or not, you follow a religion. It may not be Christianity or Judaism. We, we, we close in now. Um, so we, we do not, we do not, you may, we, we, it may not be Christianity or Buddhism or Hinduism or Catholicism or any one of these other religions, but there's the religion that is in the West, the religion of the self. The religion of self-indulgence. The religion of consumerism. All these things have enslaved you, my fellow students. And if you see it, you see it. And if you don't, then I urge you to open your heart. Things that have enslaved you, and I mentioned a few of them. And if you want to be a slave to that, and a slave to yourself, and to your desires, and to your lusts, that is your option, but it is better to be the slave of Allah, the one who controls the heavens and the earth and controls me and you. So we close with that and I hope that there is no uh, in ambiguity and I, I apologize if I have taken uh, too much time. If there's any questions quickly, anything, anything, anything at all you want to ask about Islam. I always ask this, but somehow nobody ever brings up any questions. I don't know if you all are too shy or if you don't want to ask, but I am completely open to any questions you'd like to ask. Is there anything you all would like to ask? Alhamdulillah. Okay. So I brought some um, <clears throat> some Qur'ans here. I didn't bring much. There's a lot of people here if you want one. It's an English version of the Qur'an. Um, the Qur'an was revealed in Arabic and it was preserved in Arabic. The Arabic language is memorized by millions of Muslims around the world. That is one of the ways that Allah preserved the book. That is why you could say the Bible changed so many times but the Qur'an never changed. But this is an English version. It means it's a translation of the meanings. Right? And it's a good start. If anybody wants to just have it to read, it's free. You can have one. And I brought also some pamphlets. Everybody could take one. That gives some basic concepts in Islam. Just please take one before you go. I don't know if you want one of these. I don't have much. If anybody didn't get one next time, if anybody wants a Quran next time, I could bring some more. Go on. Sorry, yeah, but that is all I